Hey everyone, Idle Stand Nation here, back with episode 4. Um, this is being recorded on February 16th of 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Bang. I'm Oda. And you Hood. Yep, <laughs> and um, we got a lot to talk about with this episode. Yeah, let's just get into what we all want to talk about. Itzy, let's, get, let's just start talking about them. <laughs> so, did you guys... Uh... You guys watch uh, Itzy's uh, like their premiere show- showcase? Their- I started when it first aired, uh, like, but then I kind of fell asleep. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gonna. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're talking about yeah. the. There is a couple of premiere ones that I saw. A couple different ones. So the premiere- the, the couple that you would have. Oh. Yeah, like the actual like premiere was um, hosted by two of the former members of uh, Wonder Girls. Uh, I don't think I was watching us that far, and because um, wait, are you talking about the premiere showcase where? Yeah. That. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I kind of Haylin and uh, uh, Yubin. Yeah. Uh. So I only saw bits and pieces. I. W- watched the beginning where they started showing the girls and then I was like okay this is, this is uh... <laughs> I watched the the one that I watched wasn't the one where it showed like all the girls right before it just went straight into the mm. the premiere of them mm. dancing and singing mm. yeah it's only a three that was that's only a three minute clip though right yeah that's yeah, the no, only this was... I, thing I watched well, that, that's an that's an excerpt from the the whole episode. It's a forty seven it's a forty seven minute long video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just watched it on YouTube. I was it just popped up on a recommended, and I ended up watching it. Yeah. They, they have were, it on the uh, Live. They were lip syncing though, right? Because a lot of people are making a big deal about about it. Uh, well, so. Okay, so. People, so lip syncing isn't a whole, whole, big deal to fit to me because. Uh, sometimes, like, you don't want to sound really breathy, so they lip sync, even though that they can sing the song, they've sung the song a million times, but, like, if you're dancing, especially if you're, the dancers are super energetic, super extreme. Like theirs is. Yeah. You're gonna get, you're gonna get tired. You don't want them to be super breathy when they perform, you want to see them perform. Unless it's a type of song that uses a lot of chest voice, then it, it would sound natural. Yeah, but it do, it doesn't sound like it uses a lot of chest voice. No, it's it's a good mix of uh, both chest and nasal voice. Exactly. So it's like you don't want them breathing super heavy while they're singing. Yeah. Yeah. So, as far as like the actual music video itself, uh, what do you guys think? I'm so so with it. I liked it. I loved it. <laughs> I um, I'm not a fan of uh, flashy lights and whatnot. It's it it got really distracting. Uh, I like the settings. Um, where, like, cause you said it uh, dollar dollar meant something. I don't remember what you said it was. It means different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it which, like having the different settings changing every so often does make sense uh, considering what the song is about. It's dollar dollar. It's different. And oh. the album itself, it's different. But it it, it just it seemed really busy to me. Well, it's, the song itself is high energy. The dance is high energy. Yeah. So the, the video, I felt, is appropriate to the feel of the song and the choreography. Yeah, and that's how I felt. Yeah. I'm, I I thought that first watch, when I watched it, I thought the beat was really good, and the dancing was on point with the song. Yeah. Yes, and same with the with the cinematog- cinematography for the mu- music video itself because it was, the music video was shot in a high energy way. It kept pace with the song, and the choreography, and yeah, it with the way the effects were too. The effects, you know, it definitely helped to sell that that high energy feel of the song. So watching watching the music video with listening to the to the music and watching the choreography, 
it really made me want to get off my, you know get off the couch and start dancing along with them if I had known the choreography. <laughs> I thought it matched it well, you know. I thought it matched it well. I, for, it's just for me, I just didn't like the visuals myself, just because it for me, I'm not. I don't like busy things. It, it's just for me, I get overwhelmed fairly easily if I'm get uh. Okay, so I get overwhelmed fairly easily when I'm watching too many things at the same time, uh, because I, tr I'm an analytical person. I try to analyze every little bit, so having everything come at me, at once, just, even though it like matched, I was like, okay, this is a the visual visually it's a little bit too busy for me, but, uh, I do agree that everything matched really well. Everything was, flowing really well. Uh, it's, it just seemed really busy to me. That That's all it is. That's why I'm just so-so about it. That transition from when they went to, like, the rap beat and then it went back to the, the whole, like, catchy pop. Um, a lot of people I saw in the comments were saying that, oh, they the music video lost me at that part and stuff. I thought that was, like, a really good transition, though. Yeah, I thought... Because I thought, I thought it was a great... Kind of like a great like uh, um, break in the middle of the song. Yeah, yeah. So, cause uh, the overall, the overall sound song itself, right? From the sound and with the like the accompaniment, there's a lot going on with it, but it doesn't feel disorganized. No. Like I feel like it's a lot of things that are blended well together from just even like it, even from like the accompaniments to the to the vocals, right? There was just, there was just a lot of different things going on with it, and I liked it. So. It it gave it does give a like a younger feel, which uh, like does accompany the whole energetic and all that. Um, that's that's what I thought. Uh, I, I'm getting older. I can't keep up with all that energy. <laughs> well, I, I'm and, just and getting it, becoming a cranky old man. I mean, it makes sense because like the average age of for for them is like what seventeen years old. So the oldest one is is, uh, she's gonna be nineteen this year. Yeah. And then the youngest is fifteen. It wow. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a uh, Yuna. Yeah. So, which is my bias? Which it's like, bruh. <laughs> so so with with her being like, uh, two or three years younger than the other members, uh, I have a feeling that Leah is gonna be like the. The fake Magne compared to you know, yeah. Cause like, cause like with Leah, she's she's got the more rounded features that you'd associate with like you know a baby face. Yeah. Even though like Leah's actually like the second oldest in the group, so I think it would be an interesting interesting uh, uh, dynamic. Cause like with Yuna being more being the youngest, but she carries a more mature vibe to her, uh, with her image as well. She does. To be honest, so when I first saw the group, I was like, "Okay, so Leah." I thought she was technically the Machne just from looking at them, uh, but it turns out uh, Yuna was. I was like, "Yes." Oh wow. Yeah, and you know, from looking at them as well, I thought that maybe their average age was more like nineteen or twenty. No. Uh, for me, I thought they were around seventeen or eighteen. Uh, which is which you would get from Leah and uh, Chen Young, uh, Young, but I actually got Chen it from is like, I actually got it from uh, Ryujin and uh, Yuna. To be honest, that's I was like just visually looking. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Ryujin, she so I actually never really paid much attention to her um, up until the the showcase, but like because uh, initially I don't know, I was just more. On board with like Yeji and uh, Chaeryong. For me, it was definitely Chaeryong because of uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, and so you guys, you guys really should watch the uh, the pr the premiere, the premiere showcase. Yeah, I, it, it's it's been a busy week. So, did they? They didn't release anything to physically buy with itsy did they no not yet it's a digital uh, download i've been yeah because i would have loved to get it even if it was just two songs 
Yeah. I would have definitely got something. I, oh, yeah, dude. Like, I've been keeping an eye on it because, like, I still have some coupons to use on YesAsia.com, and I'm definitely wanting to use one of them for Itzy. Yeah. Um, so I've been keeping an eye out on that. Yeah. So, I mean, granted, every time I look up Itzy, Google tries to get me to go to Etsy. <laughs> um, I think I've had that problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, f- so far, I haven't heard anything about them having a physical album yet. But uh, once they do, I'm I'm definitely gonna let everyone know as soon as I can. Because <laughs> I know yeah. you two want to buy it. I know Ghost wants to buy it. Uh, I know a few other people who want to buy it. So I'm like, okay. If, if I see a physical album, I'm going to let you all know. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Uh, knowing Bang, you're probably going to get like the uh, special signed version or whatever they have, right? If they have it, you know I'm definitely going to get it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I actually saw, I was on Twitter, and someone retweeted a thing from, they stayed at a... I don't know, was it a Luna, it was a Luna performance thing, or something that they went to where they got a bunch of merch, and they ended up getting a bunch of signed stuff, and I instantly messaged, I'm like, hey, is that just for, like, personal use, or did you, you planning on selling anything, and they're like, oh, no, it's just personal, I'm like, oh, I <laughs> I was like, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so for the <clears throat> music video itself, it, de- it had a strong debut, do you remember what the account was for the first 24 hours? Uh, it was more like than 4 million. Mil. 4 million? It was more than 4 million. Yeah, mil. it, it was... I, it, broke rec- it broke the de- rookie debut record. Um, yeah, it re- well, it's in the top 20 for most views in the 24-hour period. And it ranked 13th, I think. It was 11th or, 11th or 13th for most views in 24 hours. Well, it broke it for the most uh, views for a female group. I know that for a debut. Uh, mm. I don't remember what it was. I think it was. I, I know it was really high. And then the last I saw it was a couple of days ago where it was at 40 mil. It, yeah, it's at 48 million right now. Yeah, so. It hasn't even been a full week yet. No. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, they're doing really well. No. Uh, I mean, there there has been a lot of expectations, uh, especially since Chae Ryong's in it. Uh, they're twice his uh, sister group, so there 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 was a lot of hype for them, for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, let's see. I know, I know. Uh, what's it? Uh, Prior to their debut, there was like a lot of people already looking for it and just wanting to be like. Hurry up and debut! Like I think it was Ghost that was counting down every day for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. What do you I have? I have Bang? this. Um, in the comments, there's a view update. Day one, they had thirteen million nine hundred thirty-three thousand seven hundred twenty-five views. Oh yeah, they 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 were short. From uh, I remember seeing a comment saying, "Well, they're continuing the twice curse where they're uh like." A mil- like a little bit before another million uh, hit because they hit the 13.9 whatever mil instead of the actual 14 mil so I remember seeing a comment about that uh, but yeah continue <laughs> so so for the they've already sh- uh, showcased like a couple like backstage uh, videos for like focusing on some some members like first one was for Yeji Yeji and they recently just released one for Leah yeah, yeah. Oh. and I know so <laughs> I myself watched the uh, Yeji's and I was so excited for it like I was uh like because you know in the music video right she doesn't she doesn't smile a whole lot no you catch like maybe a couple smirks in the video but in her behind uh, video she she's all smiles like it's it's so it's so pretty like and, and it's like it's kind of like with like lisa from blackpink where she's got this different like on stage persona and uh, compared to how she actually is yeah so i definitely see them as so like being on stage they're they're more 
definitely go crush uh, and kind of like give that strong feel but looking at their behind the scenes and whatnot like they look like such sweethearts um, oh yeah like uh, I think it was from one of the re- recent music because uh, I saw this flowing around Twitter uh, so it, I don't know what music show it's from, but they were gr- they were kind of like really shy about grabbing fortune cookies, so they each were like kind of nervously grabbing one each, and it was absolutely adorable. But then it would cut to a, a scene of twice grabbing a bunch of uh, fortune cookies, <laughs> like as much as they could, and they're like little uh, hands. But like it really shows the difference between how the two groups are, especially between since twice has been together for three years now wow it's yep. it's been three years and uh Izzy's only been debuted for less than a week so it does show a difference between the two groups and it's 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 kind of funny it's kind of funny yeah so uh, i think we me you got anything else you want to talk about with the itsy bang um i can't really think of anything yeah, I think we. Pre- I know I didn't end up watching the behind the scenes for it. I had it pulled up, and I had it like in my watch later. But I ended. Up, I didn't end up actually watching it. So I know for myself, I initially just I was only looking forward to like uh, Chae Young's and and Ye Ji's, but I want to watch all of them. Like I'm looking forward to all, all five members. Uh, yeah, I I definitely want to see how they grow because, like, th- since. I, I can't wait till they're on Weekly Idol. I can't wait till yes. to see them on... Uh, Idol uh, Room. Yeah, Idol Room. I'm like, what was that show with Don, Donnie and Connie? Yes, I, w- <laughs> I want to watch it all. <laughs> yeah, so I... Because for me, it's... Yeah, getting... Watching the music video is real, is a good way to introduce you to the group. But to really get a good feel for the group is seeing them on variety shows. is seeing them up there behind the scenes. Uh, it's... I mean, we already have a good feel for Che Young thanks to Sixteen. Uh, she she seems like such a sweetheart. Uh, she does seem a little more confident now that she's part of a group rather than when she w- was in Sixteen competing against Twice, uh, Naughty, and all of them. It's 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 a nice it's nice seeing her smile a lot more in the behind the scenes. To be honest. Oh yeah, and at the same time, she's still humble like yeah. she, she like she 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 ex, she ex, she had ex, experienced failure before on 16 and c- yeah. picked herself up and carried her through and now she's debuting yeah i'm happy for the lee sisters to be honest oh che, yeah che Yun being on eyes one and che young being in uh itsy oh my god yes i can't wait to see them on stage together uh the the name has a freaking grown let's see itsy film is night uh Red Velvet, Twice, G Friend. Uh, what was it? Yeah. It's it's Red, Twice, Friend. Nine. Yeah. It no. It's Red Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Red Cherry. Yeah. Something. It's it's a long list, but I just want a bunch of like either interactions in the next uh, Isaac between all these groups oh man yes uh, but yeah that's my spiel about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, Bang you haven't heard about or you haven't seen that video for Nitsy Project yet have you when it was brought up a long time ago like sometime last year I ended up watching the whole thing but I didn't realize until Aura said it was the same thing that he brought up last time I just don't remember much about it. So the Nizzy project, it didn't have a name till I think last month, maybe a, a little while before that. Yeah, it was just known as a, a a Japanese girl group project. Yeah, which is probably why you didn't connect it to, and all that. But uh, it it isn't it's a, it's it's another survival show. Is basically how I see it. Well, it, it's going to. I mean, that's part of the process because, so, one of the things that JYP, when he kind of led into the project, right, he talked about how for Korean idol culture, it's 
you, the, the idols go through a long training period and then they de- debut a completed product right yeah whereas with japanese uh, idol culture they debut a fledgling and it kind of brings out this nurturing instinct from the fans so that the fans will help the idol grow and support their upbringing yeah so with jyp he wants to leverage the both of, of these um idol cultures like the best of, of both worlds right and and do something different with this japanese uh, girl group so with that that's part of the that's part of the the idea behind doing the reality show so he, he gave a timeline um in that recent video because he did a was the, the seventh so it was last week that, the, that he he did a a talk with his like um what's it called the investors Investors and and whatnot exactly so the timeline was being that mid-july uh for about a month they're gonna go to some cities in japan sapporo sendai tokyo nagoya osaka hiroshima fukuoka and okinawa and two cities in america los angeles and honolulu because they have a large population of you know japanese descended persons so from these from these 10 areas they're gonna for about one month they're gonna you know go through all these auditions and they're gonna select 20 trainees and mm-hmm. you know that's gonna be part of the process that's shown in the reality show is from the audition to when they start when they get their like 20 semi-finalists and do their debut training so after they do it like after they select their 20 trainees they're gonna take them to korea where they're gonna go through dance lessons vocal lessons physical training as well as etiquette and public manager lessons and it's, that's probably about six months long yep so um, it, that's you know you're supposed to like you're watching them you're watching them grow and that's part of what that reality show is just like how we did with 16. yeah yeah uh, i mean so oh uh, uh was it Jap- just japanese descent or because i thought he said they just had to be really fluent in japanese well, fluent in Japanese, they have to be. They have to be fluently, like naturally fluent in Japanese. Yeah. Um, but the target audience is Japan, so yeah, naturally, you know, it will be more geared towards p- people of Japanese descent. So yeah. otherwise, that's why like eight cities in Japan and those two cities in America, which of those two, those two cities that they ch- that's from America are places with high Japanese pop- uh, populations. Or Japanese descended populations, yeah. And so after the debut training of six months, they're gonna have their final um, training and audition, and that is also gonna be aired as well. It's gonna be aired in April of twenty twenty, whereas the reality show for for like the first twenty, or yeah, for the for the first twenty will be aired in October twenty nineteen, this year. Okay. And then, so after April 2020, they'll have their final, like their no kidding, like debut training, and they will debut in November 2020. I, I for me, I thought it was it's going to be really interesting just because, uh, because he, how he does mention that it's going to be a mix between both, uh, Korean and Japanese idol culture, just because, like if let's take. Oh, it seems like every video now I'm gonna bring up AKB, <laughs> but it's you. You see the King say the trainee members, like perform on stage. You see them kind of grow with the, the like full on members, uh, and you just watch them grow. You see them develop themselves. You see them. You just see them their them develop in their careers throughout while like. You don't see very much of that for uh, Korean trainees. You kind of get an idea, but uh, from like through the grapevine, through maybe what they talk about, but you don't really see it. Um, and you just see them like these amazing dancers already, pretty much already singing, dancing. I can't do any of what the Korean members do at like 16 I'm like dang I suck <laughs> <laughs> but 
like, but then you it's you can get a closer connection with the uh, Japanese trainees from or oh, the Kankyusei because they're not the best dancers, they're not the best singers, but you see them perform, you see them practice, you see them grow as performers throughout their entire career with the group. And so I think, yeah, having combining both of these and actually see, allowing people to see the growth, um, it definitely will create bigger hype for the final members. Yeah, yeah, cause um, cause that that was one of the things about like, with uh, Produce One Hundred One and Idol School, right? Or even the unit, you know, because it, these are all trainees who've already had a, a fair amount of training, right? Except for mm-hmm. like a handful of con- contestants who had maybe one month of training at their company, but most of them exactly. were training for what a year on average, at least. Six, Others for six, six years. To a year. Yep. Whereas with like the unit, it was a, they were already debuted idols, and that's why with Produce Forty Eight, uh, even though the Japanese contestants had already debuted, a lot of them didn't really get much training or at least the same level of training as the Jap or as the Korean trainees. So you got yeah. to, you got to see them grow, and exactly. especially especially from like the first episode of Produce Forty Eight where they're doing the initial evaluations. Like how many of them got like F rank and and D rank, right? It it broke my heart. It broke my heart. But you saw them grow and like, you know, eventually make their way up to A rank, or at some point like the the rank stopped mattering, but you yeah. you saw them competing very very like very competitively, uh, against the more established trainees, and ma- exactly. making it to the final cut. Yeah. It, it's it's going to be it's going to be an emotional roller coaster. Let's to all say over the again, least. all over again. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I I think it's going to be great too seeing these trainees just get pulled off the streets from from these cities, and most of them, if not all of them, probably never had any formal training. Exactly. If, if anything, they may have gone to some dance schools that, you know, their parents paid for that maybe they paid for if they're, because I think the um, what their, their recruit their recruiting age is is going to be from fifteen to twenty two is what JYP said they were looking for. So was it fifteen? I thought it was like younger than that. Fifteen to twenty two is what he said in his uh, latest video. So, okay. so for you know for the ones who are like, who are older, yeah, they may have, uh, paid for their own like dance and vocal lessons but not to the same extent as someone who's taken into a company to get trained through that company you know there would have been a lot more focus on it, it, it within that company versus paying some other like dance school or vocal school yeah and i mean i i remember jyp 2.0 the that one where we talked about how they were uh, basically having everything in house pretty much for for that particular uh artist or group oh wait yeah, you, so no you're talking about for like the actual company structure itself right so yeah like uh, yes. jyp entertainment having jyp publishing to write their own songs exactly okay um, yeah even so even though that is uh like they're partnered with sony uh sony sony music they're bringing the members to korea to train them yes uh so they're going to be trained in the style of JYP. They're going to have the style of JYP instead of having some random like trainer style. Uh, not saying that those random trainers would be bad or anything. It's just going to be very different from JYP style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and uh, one, of, one of the qualifications that JYP, JYP talked about was... Uh, you know, dance and vocal potential is valued over the actual demonstrated skill, right? Because for a lot of people who are trained or or, or taught through like these classes, you know, they're 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 taught in that person's style, right? Mm-hmm. What what JRP is most interested in is can this person sing and dance 
in their own unique color. Yeah. So, you know, it's not it's not just emulating Twice or Blackpink or uh, Alicia Keys or whatever, right? It's yeah. You know, someone who is singing in their own unique way, dancing in their own unique way. It. Uh, so it's something that uh, I'm going to draw back to sixteen, where he goes, "Are you a star?" It's like yes. That's if you really think about it. It's do you possess the qualities to make yourself shine, not what the skills you were taught uh, yeah, and, from and, someone else. And and that's why, um, if you remember, Momo got debuted or not? Uh, she got eliminated early on, right? And yeah. c- compared to to Natty, like they, na- like Momo and Natty were, were like the rivals, the dance rivals, because what Natty had versus Momo. Like Mo- Momo had had really strong fundamentals, right? Dance fundamentals. Oh yeah. But she danced as she was trained versus in her her own unique style, right? Yeah. V- versus Natty. Natty didn't have a lot of the the solid fundamentals down, but what she what she lacked in that, she really made up for it with her ability to dance in her in her own unique flavor. Yeah. And that's she, exactly she... what 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 he was looking for. I mean, I think that's also attributed to Nati being really young. 11 years well. old, right? Or 13? I think it was 13? Thir- Bang? Yeah. Do you do you perhaps remember? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I just remember she was like really, really young. I think she was yeah. 13. So, yeah, having having that, that youth where she hasn't really had enough time to get painted by other people's... Um, impressions you know yeah where maybe momo because momo was already 17 com- was she i think she was 17 at the time okay yeah so 17, she, or, 17 or 18 i don't remember yeah so um, she already had you know all that time to like really be impressed upon by all these other um groups out there and kind of like take on like their style and she's been dancing since she was i think two or three so she's had 15, 16 years of experience of learning from other people. Yes. But ev- eventually, um, Momo was able to, to, to bring out her own flavor. Yeah. I mean, it. bang, I know this is going to hurt her so spot, but uh, she did learn it a little bit too late, which is probably why she got eliminated. <laughs> not not trying to be mean, but, you know, it it might be one of the reasons, but... It, like, I, once after she found her own style, her own flavor, it did allow her to debut with Twice eventually, which was, it, I, I wouldn't change, yeah, I wouldn't change that for anything, you know, love having Momo in Twice, uh, bang, you absolutely love having Momo in Twice. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, like, once she found her own flair, uh, she really brings it. And yeah, it definitely displays when you get to see them dance, uh, or where the dancers are really focused on Momo uh, and all that. That that that's all I have on this. Don the bit for Momo, Nati, and Twice. I guess <laughs> <laughs> that since we brought it back to that circle. Uh, Did you have any other like any questions on uh, the the Nitsi project? No, not really. I mean, you guys. Oh. Um, you guys covered most of what it's supposed to be and when it's supposed to be, so all we gotta yeah. do is wait for it, pretty much. Until they release more information, at least. Yeah, I'm already yeah. looking forward to it. It's, it's only, it was only an eight minute video. Um, oh, something I did find interesting about the video was how JYP it, so it's not uh, like the content of it, but how he presented it, how he presented in Japanese, because even from the get go, he goes, "You must be surprised that I'm speaking Japanese." Now, don't expect me to be act, uh, fluent in Japanese, but you know, I'm presenting my message to uh, you guys in Japanese because this is a Japanese project, basically. Yep. That's what he did with when he was speaking in English, right? Yeah. The first video. I, yeah. Did he say that? Yeah, for um. Yeah. 
Was that for the JYP 2.0 video? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I must have missed that part then. Because I thought he was fairly fl uh, fluent in English uh, myself. Because he does answer in English, which yes. isn't really scripted. Because I noticed for this Nizzy project, it doesn't film him uh, answering questions, even though he said he was going to answer questions after the presentation. Yeah, because uh, he even he even said at the beginning too that he only he only memorized what was needed for the presentation. Exactly. Yeah. So well, it, he also in two point he answered questions in I think it was Korean and English. Well, yeah. So he answered the ones that were asked in English. Uh, in English and then anything that was asked in Korean in Korea. Yeah. Yeah. So he he was able to switch between the two, uh, fairly e a lot easily, more easily. But with j the Japanese, he's n he's not as fluent. Um, obviously, learning talking in a third language is gonna be harder anyways. Well, plus yeah, he, a, he even said that language. he st he started late. Uh, so because because he said he started late with learning Japanese, it leads me to believe that. He actually only started learning fairly recently. Yeah. And that the the way the presentation was, the, the the way he said the things that he did in the presentation, leads me to believe that someone else translated what he wanted to say into Japanese, and he just memorized the words. So. Exactly. Which I mean, I don't have a problem with that. It's, it, but it's worth saying that he's trying. Yeah, I just I just don't want anybody overestimating his Japanese skill. So. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because I, from at least a business standpoint, uh, trying to converse with your audience and who you want to basically... Your target your, market. Exactly. Your target market to is trying to connect to them in their language, in their communication style uh, as yeah. best as possible. Yeah, it, show, it shows his commitment. Exactly. So you know that he... He really wants uh, this Nizzy project to succeed, and which makes me look forward to it even more because he's putting the like extra effort that you might not see other CEOs or com uh, owners of companies do is put in that like little those little minor efforts into these things. Yeah, I just, I just remember uh, as I was watching it, those couple of parts where I thought the. Uh Pronunciation pronunciation was a little rough, and yeah. <laughs> he actually had misspoken a um, a couple parts. Where, like I remember one part in, in particular that stood out to me was like he ended it with the suffix for uh, ka, which turns into a question, but it wasn't a question; it was a statement. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, I I must have missed that part. Yeah. Cause yeah, I was just trying to get all the information as possible, like logged into my brain as best as possible. I'm like, okay. He's doing this. He's doing this. Okay, he's doing this. I I had no time to fully chance listen to all the like little connotations. I um, so I didn't realize it till like towards the end of the video because th there's a couple of words that I don't know because it, it, because of the nature of it, right? Where, you know, it's where it's like business industry type uh, vocabulary. Yeah. And um, but I was able to kind of connect the dots. Mm -hmm. But. I didn't realize until like maybe the the last uh, minute and a half. I'm like, oh, there's English subtitles. <laughs> that definitely helped me. Well, because like initially when I hit the um, that button to bring up like the captions and whatnot, it had it in Korean, and I, I didn't think to like try and click over to see if it had English subtitles available. Mm. But I was like, yeah, whatever. I pro I'll understand ninety percent of it, and then <laughs> fill in the gaps with the uh, rest. Yeah, the context clues. So. Yeah. All right, uh, so we had a lot of releases this week, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, granted it was also Valentine's Day, so there were a few Valentine's releases too. Those were kind of time limited. <laughs> yeah, I, um, let's see, Dreamcatcher. Yeah, Dreamcatcher, obviously it's his debut, we just talked about that. Hwasa. Also with uh, a twit. Yep. Uh, Taemin with Juan. Nine Muses with Remember. And I think... Uh, so, how many... Was there a couple other? other yeah. Other? 
so Tiffany, uh, she had a live broadcast before she uh, released just the soundtrack, uh, not the full album, but the, just the soundtrack of Lips on Lips. The, uh, the full soundtrack is going, the full like album is going to be released on like the 22nd, but just Lips on Lips was released on Valentine's Day itself. Okay. Yeah, and Bang, you mentioned earlier that uh, Dreamcatcher's latest though uh, has been getting a lot of plays for you. Yeah. Personally, Piri was good, but I like And There Was No One Left. I like that one probably more than Piri. How many tracks are there for that album? I want to say five. I might be wrong, though. There is Intro, Piri, Diamond, And There Was No One Left, and then Daydream, so there's five. And then there's the instrumental for Piri, so... I don't really consider it an instrument. I kind of just have it as a sidekick track. Is I guess would not. It's not exactly a B track, but it's not exactly a four track by itself. I kind of consider it just instrumental as a sidekicks. I mean, so, I still have it on. If it if it pops yeah. up and I realize it's an instrumental, I usually skip it. But I mean, instrumentals are good, uh, especially if you want to do karaoke. <laughs> Definitely not doing that. <laughs> oh come on! Don't, I, I, we want to hear your uh, beautiful voice doing uh, the pity uh, karaoke. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a video on that. Hey, you know what? When we go to Japan, all right, that's definitely going to happen. Uh, what karaoke? Yeah, all of us. Yeah, dear God, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. I am up for karaoke. Uh, I mean, I won't be I, good. I, I, that's that's fine. You, I'm not good either, man. Neither am I. You know what though? We we just get some beverages in us. It won't matter. Yeah. So. Uh, some soda. Exactly. S- lots of soda. So <laughs> just just the adult flavored soda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's see. So, of the releases, I still haven't. I have not listened to Tamin's or Tiffany's. I have heard uh, PD's and or Dreamcatcher's PD and nine muses remember and so for me uh nine muses remember is kind of sad because uh it's actually it's their it's their last music video before before their uh disbandment like so i wasn't at like it does suck that they're disbanding i remember listening to uh donna prima when it first released prima but, donna yeah Damn yeah, my demo. Shh. Words. <laughs> English. Difficult. It's my third language. That that's what I'm gonna chalk it up to. Uh but no. Uh, so I listened to to it, but I wasn't as on board. Uh, I think Ji Hoon and I've talked about it where it was around the time of uh Son Yoshi Day being at their high point. So we were definitely on the Girls' Generation, Son Yoshi Day, uh, Hype Train during that time, which kind of pushed Nine Muses to the side in our, in our hearts, at, at least. Yeah, and so for me, like, it's a, it's a little bit of a regret on my, on my end. So, you know, here we have this, uh, this group that's been around for nine years, and yeah. they're disbanding before I actually had a chance to really, to really give them a chance. Exactly. It's kind of like how uh, Bang just got into Sista as they were disbanding. <laughs> how yeah. dare you bring that up? The <laughs> uh, movie hey. is still fresh. Hey, I, I, I would take any jab that I can just to make it la- us laugh. <laughs> uh, but no. Uh, yeah, so with Nine Muses, yeah, I, the, remember was good. It kind of felt somber i liked how instead of having uh all these uh random oh uh, like basically a storyline uh similar to uh, other music videos it was more of literally behind the scenes for the entire music video where you see the members just kind of chilling having fun it was it was a nice nice music video yep yeah, and uh, you know it would be great to see this video like kind of take off a bit, right? Get get quite a bit of views, um, and have them like on a nice uh, 
end on a, on a nice note. Have for, a good send off. Yeah. Exactly, a good send off. I mean, it, it. I don't think it's going to. It helps that there were so many releases this yeah. week, this week. Uh, it, it's it's unfortunate because it's definitely get, getting overshadowed, definitely by Itzy. Uh, not trying to to throw shade on Itzy or anything. It but it. Itzy is definitely one of the biggest comebacks, uh, or debuts. debut. <laughs> yeah, debut is not comebacks. Uh, uh, this basically season or this week, so it overshadows a lot of music videos. And then, T- personally, I really like Taman's uh, "Want." It gave uh, a good. I'm trying to remember that song. Now. Pay for me. It gave the pay for me from the Black Panther soundtrack uh, by the Weekend and Kendrick Lamar feel. Uh, it, it's doing pretty well. It's at five million, five million views right now. Yeah, it, it it's really good. Um, like the imagery is really good. Uh, do you care if I spoil any of the music video, like visually? Yeah, it'll be fine. At least for yeah. me, anyways. Uh, bang? No, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, like, I like the whole smoke, the mirrors, uh, the dance uh, really fit well. It was kind of, It's slow, but it's not... It's, it's an enticing music video, obviously, to fit the whole want feel. It's a desire. It's got snakes, um, so that, that kind of made it kind of cool, too. I want to. I haven't seen the behind the scenes, so I kind of want to see uh, if he was actually with snakes or if he was just the snakes were kind of CGI'd in. But uh, it it was a good music video. It it definitely uh, got my interest the first to watch through. Um, especially since it reminded me of "Pay for Me" from by The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to uh, get caught up on all of these. So I definitely want to give. Dreamcatcher's period, another another view as well. Because another last time I watched it, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really fully engaged because I was trying to do other stuff at the same time. So. The music video, I felt like was a little weird. Did you? I I only watched it once, but from what I saw, I've never actually watched one of their music videos. And seeing that with the music, I'm like, wow, they make this type of music. Like that's insane. Well, it isn't all it's their... good music, but but you like so you say weird. You talking about like with the imagery, or like the uh... yeah, like there was like there was there was like what dolls and stuff, and like they're trying to do like a horror feel. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean there was a lot of from what I remember, there was a lot of white, and then the girls themselves were wearing a lot of red. So uh, I can't say that I remember everything clearly, just because. There were a lot of releases. <laughs> yeah, I, I I did remember thinking like there was a lot of um, kind of like allusions to witchcraft and sorcery and whatnot. Like that's very typical of their music videos, because like even their album covers, you know, they have like that symbology that that would make you think of like a witch's uh, um, spell book. So, like I, I mean, I, I remember that, that was the first thing I thought of was like this is a this is definitely Dreamcatcher's flavor. For like the cin- cinematography and the imagery, yeah, I, I I love the cinematography for it. To be honest, uh, it it wasn't it it was simple but effective is my is the best way I can put it. Simple but effective. It put the girls center stage basically for the the music video. Like you were just definitely drawn into the girls. So it I remember thinking that. It kind of felt like uh, early to mid two thousands, like pop rock, like Paramore. Yeah, like two thousand five, two thousand seven. Oh, really? So did someone say the same thing? I think so. Yeah, because I remember thinking that. Like, I feel like two thousand seven. Like, I feel like this is two thousand seven all over again with Paramore and like I can't remember some of the other bands, but Paramore. I- it's been so long since I've listened to uh, American songs. Who was Paramore again? So Paramore, uh, was, Paramore was good. It was kind of like a a 
punk slash pop uh, rock band with a female singer. Oh, was it uh, Haley Williams? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep. I remember. I remember that now. I was like, it sounds so familiar, but who, 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 who is it? Who, who is associated with it? But then, like, uh, now I remember Haley Williams, B.O.B. Airplanes. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th- that's basically all I remember Paramore for, Paramore for is Haley Williams and B.O.B. for uh, Airplanes. That's, yeah, that's been a hot minute too. I think it's been like 11 years now. 10 years. So They're still making music though. Are they? I thought... Yeah. They had an album... Not last year, I think. Was it last, is there a last year or the year before? I, I, I honestly thought that uh, Paramore had gone the, the same route as like No Doubt. Where um, Gwen Stefani broke off and did her own thing. Well, they lost their... It was either their guitarist or drummer. And then they ended up getting a new person, I think. Okay. I, I might be like 100% wrong with that. But I know they <laughs> lost someone. They, they ended up leaving, so they had to get a new person. I thought they lost to Haley. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I thought... No, she was... I thought she was always there. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So I thought, like, because, like, No Doubt was the same kind of setup from, like, the early 90s, I think, maybe, where Gwen Stefani was, like, the lead singer, and then she broke off and did her own thing. Oh, and no. That's why I thought, like, uh, with... Well, I haven't, I haven't kept up with Paramore for, like, the past 10 years or so, so I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm looking up on Wikipedia right now. It says uh, Haley is still part of them. Okay. Yeah. But they I did. believe they lost their. I want to say it was their drummer, and they had to get a new person. Apparently, they've lost five members. So wow. Yeah, it, they're, they're three members now. So uh, according to Wikipedia, just say, just saying, looking up on Wikipedia, not firsthand knowledge. If I'm wrong, blame Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, wasn't it kind of like the same with uh, Nine Muses? Because like Nine Muses started with nine members, and then, and then they were at like five members. They they, so, they were at five members, I think. Yes, they went to they went down to five members, but of those five members, five remaining members, four of them were actually add-ons from later on. So there was only yeah. one member, H- uh, Hemi, who was there from when Nine Muses first de- debuted with nine of them. All the way wow. up until they disbanded. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Yeah, because uh, let's see, there was first it was three members that left within the first year, um, 2011. Yeah, and then two more left in 2014. So, so after that first batch of uh, members leaving in 2011, they added one person and they remained as like a seven-member group. And then yeah. 2012. They added another member. 2013, they added another member. Got them back up to like nine. But then two more members left in 2014. Oh, three members left in 2014. Two members got added in 2015. So there was a lot of member changes. Like like three yeah. more left in 2017. And yeah, they just ended up with like five remaining members. And that's just... From the it, it it gives me the impression that from the very beginning, um, Nine Music was kind of a troubled group. I wouldn't say troubled. I'd say unlucky. I yeah. Think it's, uh, like, it's. I think it's not that they were destined to, because they lasted nine years. Yeah. So it's more like it, things. Unfortunate things just happened to the group that just uh, kind of like could, wouldn't allow them to compete with the other girl groups of their generation. Yeah, because uh, they never even really got any major awards either throughout the time. But they were at least popular enough to have had uh, some concert tours and not just like those single one-off concerts at small venues. Yeah. It was like in 2013 or 2014, I think it was, that they actually had some fairly substantial like concert tours in Korea. Wow, I, I kind of feel like we're, we're we're almost speaking like like having a, a eulogy for <laughs> Nine Muses. I mean, they did disband, so 
<laughs> uh, Ouch. I, 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 I'm just stating the truth, okay? I am just stating the truth. What sucks even more is, so, it happened on February 14th. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah, because uh, prior to their announcement, they actually, apparently they were, they were on hiatus for, since August of like 2017 or some, something like that. Yeah. So um, basically almost a two year hiatus. Yes. So that definitely doesn't help anything. No, and I think maybe at that point in time, the, the it was almost like the writing is on the wall and they're just trying to see where they're going to go from there. When, you know, and how, like coordinating their uh, disbandment and whatnot. So, or even just waiting out the, the end of the contract. Yeah, that happens a lot too. Yep. Uh, so, since so bring up hiatuses. There are a few that are still ongoing that I really hope does not lead to the same path. So Just like saying. FX. Yeah. I really hope that they don't disband. I hope that they uh, come back from them soon. <laughs> uh, I I really hope to hear from FX soon. I, I loved all their music when they went on hiatus. <laughs> and then I, I love all, hearing all their singles, but, you know. Yeah, that, right Right now, I'm looking at an article about um, girl groups with like, the longest uh, hiatus period. Sonamu, Sonamu is one of them. 442 days. Uh, Pristin, 517 days. Hello Venus, also 517 days. And then you have FX with 1,184 days. Wow, that's almost three years. Yeah. So, Hello Venus, I remember uh, they released a dance practice video a few months ago. A month ago? I think it was a month ago. Yeah, I think it was about a month ago. But, so, the thing about that though is, last year they had released a dance practice video as well like early in the year like around I think it was around March or May yeah. and there was still no comeback oh but they, mean, did, they had a concert though they did have a concert like in the summer I mean it, it, it I don't feel like it's the same to be honest but it does excite uh, fans at least their fans to go oh hey we're, we're getting something you know yeah but still no music video yeah. <laughs> Still no promotions. Yeah. And in Princeton, yeah. I haven't I, heard it. I haven't heard anything from them other than like people are going, oh, justice for Princeton. Uh, where's the where's the comeback? Where's this? Where's that? Yeah, cause uh, who's their label again? Uh, Pledis. Pledis, yeah. And I, I remember hearing uh, there's been a lot of complaints among the netizens about Pledis and the way they're handling the groups. Orange caramel, uh, <laughs> uh, which is or I thought orange caramel was a um a subunit of or after school. They they are, they are. Uh, after school's I think after school's gone through a couple of member changes too. Oh, dude, there's they they're, aren't they also um, technically on hiatus or did they already disband? They're on hiatus. Since two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's that's why uh. Guyan went on PD48. PD48. It's because, it's because the group's been on. She is still technically... She, because she can't exactly go to another group on, unless it's through things like PD48. I think. Or at least that's what I think. I don't know the whole de big detail. But she mentions like... If, it, what, if she didn't debut with after school, she might have debuted and be working with in other uh, groups. Th that's what she was talking about in P uh, the early episodes of PD48 about why she's joining uh, the program. Yeah, and I know um, at the moment, Cullen and who's the other girl that, that uh, from, the, from the same agency that... Hayen. Was it Hayen? I think it's Hayen. Um, Let's see. I'm look I got the list up right now. Produce for the contest contestants. Uh, I see. 
Oh, there it is, Pletus. So, along with uh, Kalun, we had Yunjin. Okay. Ho Yunjin. And the two of them, after Protoss 48, they were actually very active on Live. They were actually um, releasing quite a bit of uh, videos on Live. I don't think yeah. they have, though. Uh, I know Gaian uh, just released a Valentine's Day video uh, on Live. Well, on Valentine's Day. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I tried... So, there were a lot of things that were happening on Valentine's Day. Uh, Eyes One had a Valentine's Day V-Live. Uh, Kayan had a Valentine's Day V-Live. Uh, Tiffany had a Instagram V-Live. Oh, <laughs> Instagram Live. Uh, so, a, lo- oh, a yeah. lot of uh, idols had uh, live videos that day. So, it it was hard. some of them even went on at the same time. Yeah, it, you couldn't keep up. Yeah, no, I only have two pairs of eyes and one computer screen. I can't keep up. Uh, but yeah, no. All right, with all the releases getting um, covered for now, you want to take it away, Ji Hoon, with all the birthdays and graduations. Sure thing. And so for this week's birthdays, we have on February eleventh, two p.m.'s Chansung. Blackpink's Rosé, Lovely's Jisoo, Seventeen's Dino, and Zaya's Dongjun. For February 12th, we have Soyu, who is from the disbanded group Sistar. February 13th, we had Halo's Jaehyun. February 14th was NCT's Jaehyun. And finally, for February 16th was Shinwa's Eric. This week, we've also had quite a bit of graduations. So we'll start with Hanlin Mota Art School. So first up, we have Twice's Cheyoung and Chui. Next up, we have Eyes One's Cheyoung, Lip Bubbles' Eunbyul, Astro Sana. Former contestants of Produce 48, we have Ko Yujin, Son Nunche, and Han Cho Wan. Golden Child's Bomin, GWSN's Anne, Dream Notes Miso, Romis Nine's Cheyoung. And from the boys, we have Sunwoo and Wall. And now, graduating from the School of Performing Arts Korea, we have Stray Kids Hyunjin, former 101 member Dehi, Wiki Meki's Yujung, Itzy's Leah, Momoland's Ain, Pristin's Shion, April's Yena, Very Very's Yongsung, Dai's Somi, D Crunch's Chan Young, TRCNG's Ha Young and Ji Hun, Favorites Jung Hee, IZ's Jun Young, and finally, Fave Girls Hae So we covered a lot of topics today, and I think it's time to wrap things up. So, Bang, why don't you go ahead and wrap things up for us? Alright. Overall, we've had quite a busy week with all the big releases. Hopefully adding to that would be Luna next week if they actually, you know, release it in time. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed episode four, and we'll see you next time. Laters. Bye.